again. My name is Kathleen. I'm going to be the platform assistant. We have a very different type of uh, situation now. We have a, um, a very different service right now, and um, I'm very much looking forward to it. Margaret Martin has put something together in which we're celebrating the four elements. Um, and so, um, and David Lankovich will be our musician, who we are very happy to have back. We always enjoy him and his flute music. And I just want to mention um, in our service, as I said, Margaret is uh, addressing the four elements, earth, air, water, and fire. And so she has asked for participants to um, look in your home and to see if you can find something or look right outside and see if you can find something that represents earth. It could be a crystal, a rock, or it could be some dirt. I have a clump of dirt that I got. I just put in a bag. Also for air, we're going to, I, I used a little fan for, you know, a little hand fan. So you can use that um, for fire. Got my old candle here. And for water, I've just got my glass of water. So if you haven't done it yet, I advise you to go ahead and do that. And now for our centering prayer. This is an Apache blessing. May the sun bring you energy by day. May the moon softly restore you by night. May the rain wash away your worries. May the breeze blow new strength into your being. May you walk gently through the world and know its beauty all the days of your life. Amen. And now for David Lakovich. Okay, I'm going to play on a piece by American composer Catherine Hoover called Coco Pelli. And I wanted to read this paragraph that she wrote. Um, Coco Pelli, the flute player, was a great Mahu, legendary hero of the Hopi. He is said to have led the migrations through the Southwest, the sound of his flute echoing through the great canyons and cliffs. In this piece, I've tried to capture some of the sense of spaciousness and of the Hopi the Hopi's deep kinship with this land.
everyone. The idea came um, up for me that it might be nice that on a Thanksgiving weekend we do something a little bit different to um, review with each other those things that we're grateful for and to experience the essential gratitude. I was um, listening to something on NPR yesterday and the doctor was talking about how gratitude and letting other people know that you are grateful for things that they bring to your life in work, at home, at the grocery store, actually makes people receive that better sometimes than a raise. Because to know we are appreciated is really essential, I believe, in our own self-esteem and our own joy in living because so many times we're living our best life and to know that in many ways we're blessing others with that and it creates a gratitude blessing gratitude blessing and um motivates me anyway in the world so i i mentioned this to the board and i mentioned um and they all seem to think it was an, a good idea. So I am looking around for Thanksgiving services, initially thinking it might be a call and response type of service, like in the back of the Wings of Song. Um, and Kay Wood, God bless him, I love you, Kay Wood, found this um, service online. And he emailed, to, emailed it to me. And said, you know, maybe with a few, you know, Kay Wood, well, maybe with a few adjustments, we could make this work for us. And darned if I don't think it will. So the things that um, I would like you to have handy, again, we're bringing it up, um, earth, crystals, dirt, plant, um, any, a rock, um, fire candles um <laughs> a match <laughs> um your log in the fire but fire um for air uh incense a fan uh a feather <laughs> um uh, and then um let's see we did earth air fire and the last one tends to escape me always. And, and I don't know why that is, but I'll, maybe I need to pray on that myself. Water. <laughs> so if we happen to have a fountain nearby, a glass of water, um, some at the sink, you know, run the water. I don't, I, I can't tell you, but have some form of water. So all of these things are essential to our, um, our lives. So I begin the service here. T today we give thanks for the gifts of our divine creator, a great spirit of thanksgiving. We acknowledge and give thanks to God for the creation of the elements of fire, water, and earth, which enable us to be physical beings, and the element of air, which brings us the very life of spirit. These elements from the unity of all people form the unity of all people everywhere. Thank you, God, for the drumbeat of the people that didn't die. Thank you, God, for our ancestors' strong heartbeat that didn't die. Fire. Let us turn to the beginning of the drumbeat that didn't die. In Genesis chapter 1, verse 3, we read, Then God said, Let there be light, and there was light.
It was the light of creation. It was the burning desire to fire with enthusiasm, to rise up in a spontaneous combustion of initiative, to quicken as leaping flames move the uniform, the unformed into the transformed. Exodus chapter 13, verse 21 reads, the Lord went in front of them in a pillar of cloud by day to lead them along the way and in a pillar of fire by night to give them light so that they might travel by day and night that we may travel through light and darkness. The light of fire is for guidance along our way as we journey forth throughout all our days. The burning of a log is the unwrapping layer upon layer of all days of radiant energy. The tree absorbs from the star, the fireball sun, from the crackling of the tinder to the popping of the embers, we hear told the life story of a tree. Embers are memories still capable of being enlivened. This is why when we gather around mellow fire, it sets us in reflection, absorbent, a reflective and absorbent mood. This is why storytelling happened around the campfire. He took in his hand the fire using a method of fire transport that never died. He took earth and shaped it into a vessel, a bowl of clay with a lid, a thermos for living ember of fire. And so fire is linked intimately and anciently with the earth. The first element we share with you this Thanksgiving celebration and every day is the gift of fire. Water. We can live without food, but water is essential. Water bathes us, clears our chakras, brings us balance, the sound of the ocean wave, the sound of the babbling brook. All water clears our minds, our hearts, our bodies. Water is one of, of our most basic resources for life. We all know that water was of the utmost importance to the Indians and the pioneers. Can you imagine with the way we live today, how it really was so many years ago? Days and possibly weeks would go by without being able to wash your hair or take a bath. All of the water you might drink would come from a canteen or a leather pouch. Imagine the praise and thanksgiving the Indians and the pioneers gave to the great spirit, to God whom, when at long last they came upon a flowing river or a nice cool stream. Water is one of the most healing elements, whether there be a beautiful stream, a peaceful blue lake, or the tapping of a therapeutic bath. We live in a world where there are many wonderful tantalizing drinks that can tempt our palates. But speaking for myself, when I'm thirsty, a large glass of sparkling cool water is what I most desire and what most quenches the thirst. As for beauty, give me something as simple and wonderful as that clear blue lake. Is this another of the wonderful gifts of God that we take for granted. In a moment, we'll be passing. No, we won't. Um, says that we'll be passing water to you. However, you will be passing water to yourself. <laughs> there is another water to compliment, to contemplate. Jesus spoke of another water, living water. Jesus taught that we are to partake of this living water 
we will never thirst again. This is the fountain of the pure Christ spirit that is always flowing within us. Do we take this living water of spirit for granted? Do we take it for granted in the same way that we take this water from the tap? I can only speak for myself when I say many times a day, I forget to go to this source of water. I forget to go to the source of living water. And yet in John chapter 7, 37, Jesus told us, let anyone who is thirsty come to me and let the one who believes in me drink. As the scripture has said, out of the believer's heart shall flow rivers of living water. The second element we share this Thanksgiving is the gift of water. I invite you to take a drink or have a little splash. Now David will be with us for our second selection. so much, David. Earth. Earth is our home, our planet. Metaphysically, Earth represents our consciousness of being physical. We have a body and plant our feet firmly on the Earth. The Earth provides nourishment for our body, beauty for our soul, and pictures of the wonders of creation. The earth gives freely and asks little in return. Earth cares for tiny seeds and brings forth an abundant harvest. Earth symbolizes the nurturing aspect of mother God. Earth is also in harmony with all the planets in our solar system, showing us how we can live in harmony with others. Let there be peace on earth and let it begin with me. Let it begin with our appreciation of earth. The third element on this Thanksgiving is earth. And as we pick up our crystals, our wood, our soil, our plant, we can see that all works together. It's more than dirt. It's more than a piece of wood 
what this represents is our standing firmly, Mother Earth, and transformation for the trees have rings the earth if we look at it if we have a baggie like kathleen has when you look at that many times you have more than just soil you have little rocks you might even have life you could have a worm in there you could have little bugs that live in there earth supports us and we are grateful for our earth and the transforming aspect and the security Mother Earth provides. Air. Let us honor the breath of life. There is nothing more precious than the breath of life. Anyone who has ever attended a birth of a baby child or animal knows the anxiety of the moment of waiting for the baby's first breath. Nothing is as essential for our sense of well being as being able to breathe with ease. And anyone who has had a stuffy nose understands that. Breath and air is synonymous with life. We give thanks for the precious gift of breath. The fourth element shared is air. We have a fan in the background. We have hand fans. It keeps us cool, it gives us breath the beginning of life. And we have now gone through the four elements, the fire, the sun, which gives us warmth, which allows seedlings to come up through earth, water that nurtures our seedlings that come up through earth, the air, that blows across and distributes seeds. This, the four elements, are our lives. The great spirit is brought in and we are available. And now I believe we have more special music. No? No, it's me again, sorry. <laughs> At this point, I invite you to grab a, a writing implement and some paper, and we'll have a few minutes to write down things that we're grateful for, things that we look forward to, things that we appreciate in others and are going to let them know that they're appreciated. We'll have time to share it out loud and take your time. There's a little um, affirmative prayer song that I'll be uh, doing while we're, we're participating in this. And it's called, Thank You, Lord. And it's something that I find a um, wonderful, wonderful thing. Oh, fire and air. to think about while I am in the process of gratitude. And the words, oh my gosh, they are so difficult. Just kidding. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. I just want to thank you, Lord. That is it. So while I play and sing, I invite you to write. And when I look up and I see some mouths moving, I'll know that we are ready to do the next thing.
So now I plan on chairing first, kind of to get the ball rolling. I am so thankful for this community. I am grateful that yesterday when I was going through a very, very difficult emotional time, I thought of you all. I thought, Margaret, at any point, I can call Kathleen or Byron, I could call Phil, I could call Jane, I can call anyone. And if you were available, you would talk me through the confusing thoughts. I knew this from the bottom of my heart and I am grateful because you comprise, each and every one of you, one of the most caring, sharing, giving, loving souls I've ever met. And I am grateful. Would anyone else like to share? Chick? I'll read what I wrote. <clears throat> I am thankful for the family I grew up in and for the love and support of my wife, Cheryl, and my son, Christopher, my rocks. Also, although I like the church I grew up in, I too am so thankful for UCDC, my spiritual home. Prior to the, uh, joining our church, I was never able to say that. I am so grateful we found it, and it found us. I am grateful. Cheryl. Um, I'm just going to say what I say every night when I get into bed. Every night when I get into bed, I put my hands over my heart, and I say, mighty I am presence. I am grateful for this blessing that is my life. And so it is. Thank you, Cheryl. Yes. I am so grateful that in May of 2012, when I begged God for help, I said, God, please help me. 
I was in the throes of, of alcoholism and I had reached that point of pitiful demoralization, pitiful and comprehensible demoralization. And I begged for God's help. And um, I got help the very, very next day. It was a miracle. I got help the very next day. And um, so, you know, I, I, you know, joined AA, um, kicking, I was kicking and screaming, but I had a person, God put a person in my life that really pushed for me to go to AA meetings. And, you know, during that time, um, you know, I had disappeared from unity, um, but thank goodness I had the unity teachings and um, I was able to keep, you know, a lot of negativity out of my head. And um, one of the first things I did, and I had been away from you guys for that's about nine, 10 years. And um, st I started working the steps and, you know, AA is definitely a spiritual program. And one of the first things I did was I came home <laughs> and, and you guys welcomed me. You didn't say, hey, where have you been? You know, nothing like that. And it was interesting because Patty, when I, left, Patty Guard um, became the um, um, responsible for the ushers. And when I came back, uh, Patty was, I think she moved to Philadelphia and I got my old job back. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I am so grateful. I am so grateful for you guys. I am so grateful for um, Unity and, you know, my life today, and it's because of you all and the Unity Principles, my life for the past 11 plus years have been filled with peace and serenity. And I am so, so very, very grateful. And the first thing I say when I wake up in the morning is I get down on my hands and knees and I thank God for my sobriety. Thank you. <laughs> oh my gosh. Oh, Helen, Helen, what I got from that is so often, don't we go kicking and screaming into our good? You think you think we were headed towards something terrible, Kathleen? <laughs> uh, yes, I was just going to make my. I'm just grateful for waking up for a new morning and being being alive another morning, and um, and for the adventures that awake the that are coming towards me these days. So I am grateful for life. I'm grateful for the friends I have and for the family. And I'll just leave it at that. Go ahead, uh, Karen. Um, I'd like to say how grateful I am for this hour and other hours like it. When you know we go through our days, the 24 hours of every day and we, we're busy and sometimes it's good and sometimes it's hard but it's amazing how we can come and spend an hour with people who are wonderful and supportive and thoughtful. And we can spend that hour being intentional and deliberate in our contemplation and our expression and how enriching it is to be able to step into a moment of really living what's important in life. And then that helped us go on with the rest of our day. And uh, we're so lucky uh, who, you know, those of us who are able to just, you know, on any given Sunday or really, you know, all the various activities and even looking back at an old, at a YouTube video of a past service, just step into that kind of grace and good. Um, it's always at our fingertips and what, what a rich blessing that is. Thanks. Hi. Um, I continue to give thanks every night for the friends in my life, which includes all of you um, and the many that have been in my life for so many years and the kindness that they've shown me and the friendship they've shown me. And I also every night say thank you to God for leading me to Scotland. I mean, of all the places in the world that people say, why did you go there? I said, I, I, it was divine order that I went there because once I got there, my heart was fixed. Um, and if I hadn't gone there, I don't know if it would have been. Um, I might not have been on the planet. So um, I just give thanks every night for the perfect heart that God gave me and that God 
gave the the people in put the people in my life who fixed it <laughs> so that it's once again a perfect little thing pounding away in my chest so i give thanks for life every night and every day carol i give thanks for you and your story <laughs> which has been inspirational i'm the lucky one <laughs> Is there Allison? Any... Yeah, Allison had their hand raised. Hi, I just wanted to say thank you so much. That was such a beautiful service. Oh my gosh, my heart is just overfilled. And I want to say that I'm grateful for Tuco. He's such a good little spiritual partner and he's all ready for church today. And, um, you know, I came into recovery kind of similar. My mom had a uh, hit her knees at 2 a.m. on uh, December 31st, 1996, and on January 1st, 1997, I've been sober ever since. Um, so, you know, those prayers really, a mother's prayers, it's so pretty. I'm almost there now. But um, anyway, so I want to thank this community so much for letting me come in and being so welcoming and so loving. And I'll tell you this year that our thoughts, our prayers, and we are always praying has made me grow up so much spiritually. Like I can't have those crazy thoughts anymore. And if I do, I'm like, do I want that to be my prayer? I better get that thought out of my head. So it's really made me evolve as a human being and as a spiritual human being. And um, I just want to thank you so much for being so embracing of Tuco and I in your community. And thanks so much to Jan who brought me in. Byron. I think I'm on. Yes. I am thankful for laughter. Uh, laughter is, is what keeps us going. Laughter is Jesus and God and all my friends. And, and what we go through, it ends in laughter and joy. And I'm laughing all the time now, every step I take. And uh, it's nice to be walking, I'll tell you. And having wonderful friends like you, you never go away, whether I'm seeing you in person or ha having you in my head. So thank you. <laughs> okay. Hi, Anne. I knew you were going to say something. <laughs> Yeah, really, Margaret. Uh, you know, when I see you, I, of course, think of Michael. You and Michael. I mean, Animalia. Because when I came into Unity, I had it, you know, definitely hit the 12-step programs. The, my deal was codependency. And it's also uh, trauma. Uh, in, uh, you know, uh, what I got, I was so grateful that the first time I came to Unity, the song that the choir was singing is God of Love. That was in January of 1988. <laughs> and the thing is, is that holding the hand business at the end of the service and let there be peace on earth was a little bit overwhelming for me. So it took about six months before I came back. <laughs> And the music that the choir is saying was God of love, who cares for me, uh, you know, and I asked Michael for the music and he gave it to me. And it was when I was playing it, I, you know, God of love, who cares for me, guide my steps to follow thee, calm and sure in all I do. Knowing your love surrounds me. And when I was playing that music, I mean, it, my sons were off to school and I, because I was in desperate need for that experience of God's love. And indeed, I did feel it. Uh, and uh, and then when Amalia, you know, in, in uh, 05, she died in 04, but in January 05, I received her uh, Christmas letter 
uh, and a thank you note. And that was that mother's love that I hadn't experienced. Uh, and of course now, uh, you know, it's great. I'm thinking that you're, you're growing and take, meeting the challenge of, of sharing uh, with, you, with community that you've come back to your, your place of being. But when I was in Bowie, again, it was this need for connection. And it was you and Michael who accepted me in when I was going through that tough spot. So I, I'm very grateful. And I'm grateful for this community because uh, when I went to Kripalu, it, it was uh, in 2018, uh, Carol Gilligan was doing a program called Radical Listening. And I shared a couple of poems. One was Violence and the other one was uh, Chosen in Love by God. Uh, and uh, it was really, it's because of the background with, with the members here that I was able to do that and felt safe enough so that that authentic self could finally come out of hiding. I mean, that took me until 2019 to get that kind of safety where you could be share your authentic self. But uh, again, you and uh, and I see David too was an important part of that with his flute music. Uh, he and Michael uh, were quite a wonderful gift of uh, their musicianship shared. So thank you for letting me share, and I'm glad you're back with us. Thank you. Uh, does anyone else have a um, a burning desire to share at this point? Come on, Byron, I know you can do it. <laughs> Eat, little Jesus boy, born long time ago. Sweet little holy child, and we didn't know who you were. You have shown us now we are trying master you have shown us how even when you were dying just seems like we can't do right look how we treated you but please sir forgive us lord we didn't know it was you, sweet little Jesus boy, born long time ago, sweet little holy child, and we didn't know who you Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Byron. <laughs> Thank you. 
express some gratitude for this service. Um, it's been very nice. Thank you, Margaret, for putting this together. It was very different than what we usually do. And I was very grateful for it. It worked out really, really well. Um, and David, uh, your music, it's just always exquisite. You know, it's just so beautiful. And so uh, it, I mean, it lifts my spirit so much. So thank you very much. And Karen for hosting. Uh, the best, uh, the last minute, having become Zoom host, I'm so grateful for adjusting everything. And Byron, I just want to mention, uh, although I love all the sharing, I really like Byron um, doing that song for us. And of course, Anne also singing for us, who I, I, I think is very gifted too. All right, so uh, ending prayer, I have picked a prayer from Maya Angelou. Um, it's from a book on celebrations or uh, rituals of peace and prayer. And this, um, this is called prayer. Father, Mother God, thank you for your presence during the hard and mean days, for then we have you to lean upon. Thank you for your presence during the bright and sunny days, for then we can share that which we have we have with those who have less. And thank you for your presence during the holy days, for then we are able to celebrate you and our families and our friends. For those who have no voice, we ask you to speak. For those who feel unworthy, we ask you to pour your love out in waterfalls of tenderness. For those who live in pain, we ask you to bathe them in the river of your healing. For those who are lonely, we ask you to keep them company. For those who are depressed, we ask you to shower them with light and of hope. Dear creator, you, the borderless sea of substance, we ask you to give all the world that which we need most. Peace. Amen. We are so blessed here at Unity Center DC for extraordinary speakers, talented musicians who share with us each week their God gift, their message, their inspiration. And for us as recipients, I'd like you to take this moment and be grateful. If you want to express your gratitude, by giving a gift to Unity Center DC, it's possible we'll put up on the screen the options, but you can give online, you can mail a cash or a check to the address you'll see on the screen so that we can continue this ministry, which has blessed us all. Thank you. <laughs>